Coming up on 5-Minute News. Trump aide says we're not going to control the pandemic. US State Department confirms paused diversity training. And Trump asks Supreme Court to block deadline extension for North Carolina ballot. It's Monday, October 26. I'm Anthony Davis. The coronavirus has reached into the heart of the White House once more, little more than a week before Election Day as it scorches the nation and the president's top aide says we're not going to control the pandemic. Officials on Sunday scoffed at the notion of dialing back in-person campaigning despite positive tests from several aides to Vice President Mike Pence, who leads the White House Coronavirus Task Force. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, pressed to explain why the pandemic cannot be reined in, said, because it is a contagious virus just like the flu. He said that the government was focused on getting effective therapeutics and vaccines to market. Democrat Joe Biden attended church and planned to participate in a virtual Get Out the Vote concert at night. He said in a statement that Meadows was effectively waving the white flag of defeat and a candid acknowledgement of what President Trump's strategy has clearly been from the beginning of this crisis. The White House said none of the staff travelling with Trump on Sunday had been in close contact with any individuals in the vice president's office who had tested positive. But public health experts said that Pence's decision to keep up in-person campaigning was flouting common sense. The US set a daily record on Friday for new confirmed coronavirus infections and nearly matched it on Saturday with 83,178, data published by Johns Hopkins University shows. Close to 8.6 million Americans have contracted the coronavirus since the pandemic began. About half the states have seen their highest daily infection numbers so far at some point in October. Despite the rising virus numbers, the White House says the US economy needs to fully reopen and it's tried to counter Biden's criticism that Trump is not doing enough to contain the worst US public health crisis in more than a century. The US State Department said on Sunday it has suspended employee training programs related to diversity and inclusion. An internal State Department cable obtained by Reuters on Saturday showed the temporary pause came after President Donald Trump's executive order a month ago, directing federal agencies to end programs deemed divisive by the White House. Beginning Friday, October 23rd, the department is temporarily pausing all training programs related to diversity and inclusion in accordance with executive order on combating race and sex stereotyping, the cable said. Trump's September 22nd executive order forbid the teaching by federal agencies of divisive concepts, including that the United States is fundamentally racist or sexist. The order followed a September 4th memo from the White House Office of Management and Budget that told officials at federal agencies they could not use taxpayer dollars to fund un-American propaganda sessions that provided instruction about critical race theory, white privilege, or taught that the United States is an inherently racist or evil country. During the first debate with his Democratic rival Joe Biden, Trump defended his executive order, saying the training programs were teaching people very bad ideas. And really, they were teaching people to hate our country, and I'm not going to do that, Trump said at the September 29th debate. At the pair's second debate on Thursday, Trump denied the accusations and said he was the least racist person in the room. With its 76,000 employees globally and representing the face of America in the world, the State Department has had a mixed track record on diversity, with racial and ethnic minorities still underrepresented, particularly in senior ranks, according to an independent federal watchdog report released earlier this year. 
President Donald Trump's campaign again asked the US Supreme Court on Sunday to block North Carolina's plan for counting absentee ballots that arrive after the November 3rd election day, the latest legal tussle in a wide-ranging fight over mail-in voting. The campaign initially filed the application on Thursday after a U.S. federal appeals court decision last week left in place North Carolina's plan, dealing a setback to Trump's re-election campaign. In a 12-3 decision, the 4th U.S. Circuit of Appeals last Tuesday denied a bid to halt the North Carolina State Board of Elections from tallying ballots postmarked by November 3rd that arrive before November 12th. The Trump campaign, the North Carolina Republican Party and others had sued over the timetable, saying that it violated the state's election code. An emergency injunction is urgently needed to ensure that our federal election is governed by the statutes enacted by the people's duly elected representatives and not by the whims of an unelected state agency, the campaign wrote to the Supreme Court on Sunday in a new filing. Next month's election promises to be the nation's largest test of voting by mail because of the novel coronavirus pandemic, and Democrats and Republicans are locked in numerous lawsuits over the issue. About 58.8 million voters have already cast ballots. Trump has repeatedly, and without evidence, claimed that mail-in voting will lead to widespread fraud, while his challenger Joe Biden and the Democratic Party have sought to remove obstacles to voting by mail. The Republican-controlled Senate is due to vote today to confirm Trump's third nominee to the Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett, cementing a 6-3 conservative majority. Trump has said he wants Barrett on the court to address any election-related cases. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Please subscribe, rate and review us at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an independent production covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering unbiased, verified and truthful world news daily.